If you want to make $100,000, a $1 million, $100 million, anybody can do it. Welcome to Real Estate Market Moves, where every week I'll be bringing you the latest news and information on the housing market, commercial real estate, what's going on with the global macroeconomic environment, and what you need to watch out for so you can make your moves, no matter what they are, when it comes to real estate, whether you're looking to buy a house, invest, get into commercial, real estate development, we cover it all. So the weekly real estate housing market update, home prices continue to hold at a relatively high level, but matched uh, the year ago pace. This is the first week in seven that prices have not grown, but from a broad perspective, the medium home listing price is held within a roughly a percent of its year ago level. So basically the median listing price was even with last year. New listings, a measure of sellers putting homes up for sale, were down again this week by 4.4%. So inventory is continuing to decline. Some of that is seasonal. Some of that is because mortgage rates have hit 8%. Typically, when you go into the fall, with the holidays, people pull their houses off the market. People tend to move less. Uh, but with interest rates where they are, that's locking even more people in and uh, keeping more inventory off the market. Uh, active inventory declined with four sale homes lagging behind year ago levels by 2.7%. Homes spent one day less on the market compared to this time last year. So homes in some areas are still selling very quickly uh, with very few days on the market. Other areas, you're starting to see inventory stack up a little bit. We are seeing price. If you'll notice, if you're following the real estate market in your area, the housing market in your area, you will see a lot of price adjustments. Prices are coming down in some markets, but again, those are off of levels uh, that we have never seen, 40, uh, basically 40 years of appreciation uh, or 10 years of appreciation that we've seen in three years. It was a 40% increase in prices from the pandemic, pre-pandemic up to this year. We've seen 40% appreciation in housing. As rates uh, rose, that affects what people can buy. It affects the medium house price, which is now median house price, which is now $400,000. Uh, which makes it much more difficult for people to qualify for that loan. A lot of pressure on the housing market out there, but the bottom line is we saw 10 years of appreciation in three years, so it's going to take some time for that to level off and balance out. Uh, pending home sales rose 1.1% in September. Even with interest rates at these record high levels, we still saw pending uh, home sales rise. New home sales are up. New home sales are representing 40 to 50% of the sales out there. That's new construction homes because builders are able to offer incentives. They're able to buy down the rate. Some builders have their own mortgage companies and, able, and are able to offer uh, really low mortgages, 4.75%, some of the home builders. So if you're looking for a home, check with the uh, big home builders in your area and find out what incentives they're offering. Instead of giving free appliances, upgrades, things like that, they're doing rate buy downs, closing costs, down payment assistance, those types of things. Um, Architects are recording business as slow with, with rates where they are. A lot of builders are pulling back, especially in the con uh, commercial and multifamily construction industry. Uh, so architects are not excited about what uh, is to come for the construction market. Uh, there's never been a worse time to buy a house instead of rent. It's now 52% more expensive to buy a home than rent one because of climbing mortgage rates especially when you add uh, rising insurance costs that we've been talking about, rising taxes, uh, and increased operating costs uh, to, make, to own and maintain that home. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're witnessing the fastest ever deterioration of the housing market. Resi Club is a great resource. Lance Lambert, he's a good follow on Twitter. He is a housing market analyst, puts out a lot of great housing market uh, information. But basically, we are in a historic deterioration in housing affordability. A 44% surge in home prices. That's what I was talking about, that 40% plus or minus over the last three years um, has, has outpaced the affordability index. And you can just look at this chart right here where you can see at the upper level where housing is more affordable, basically from 2011 through that 2019 timeframe. And it's been downhill ever since with rising rates uh, because of the Fed uh, fighting inflation and the 10-year treasury, which real estate loans are largely based off that 10-year uh, treasury, uh, is one of the reasons why we're seeing rates rise so much. But the interesting thing, you know, the 10-year treasury is up uh, because bond prices are down 
And that has a lot to do with the issuance by the government continuing to spend. They have to issue tre uh, treasuries to cover the debt. Uh, so there's a lot less buyers out there. The Fed is doing QT, quantitative tightening. So they're unloading treasuries from the balance sheet. So that's flooding the market. So you have less buyers. So that drives rates up. They have to raise the rates, drop the prices in order to attract investors. Um, and But what's interesting, even with all these high rates and things like that, like we talked about in last week's episode, there are several housing markets that are still up in prices while there are several that are down. The uh, housing markets that have seen the most appreciation, Philadelphia, Boston, Miami, Cincinnati, St. Louis, the ones that are down the most, Austin, Texas, Las Vegas, Nevada, Phoenix, Arizona, Antonio, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, and Sacramento, California. And um, this is where last week, uh, if you watched my video last week, I pulled up the uh, housing chart that showed price fluctuations and appreciations. Um, this is where I got the information from this Resi. Great resource. You can sign up for free, get their newsletters, uh, and follow Lance on Twitter as well. Uh, and, you know, this regional housing market is the epicenter of institutional home buying. Atlanta, more institutional home buyers are buying in Atlanta than anywhere else. And a lot of the institutional buyers are out there back at it again. So let's switch to, uh, switch gears to commercial and multifamily. Uh, one of the biggest thing that's interesting, multifamily has always been one of the safer asset uh, types of assets to be in, regardless of the economy. People need a roof over their head, but multifamily is coming under pressure and we're starting to see a jump in maturity def defaults. Uh, so a lot of loans that are coming due, a lot of investors paid record high prices, banking that the interest rates or betting that the interest rates would come down uh, and rents would continue to go up. We are seeing rents decline in some markets. We're seeing rents go up in other markets. Real estate's hyper local, but at the end of the day, rising interest rates on these adjustable rate uh, short-term loans that a lot of people put in place to buy the multifamily buildings, do some improvements to raise rents, uh, they're getting caught here. Uh, and next year, there's going to be a lot of these loans that are going to be coming due. So 2024 is going to be an interesting time. A lot of pressure uh, on the multifamily real estate market uh, coming up really soon uh, that we're going to see. Uh, so uh, multifamily. And then, um, you know, the other thing that you want to watch out for is even storage. So even self-storage, uh, there's been a big boom in the self-storage industry, the industrial industry, flex industrial space, things like that. There's been a lot of people moving into the industrial space because of the, uh, you know, stay at home, shop online, that kind of stuff with retail shifting became oversaturated. A lot of people paid record high prices. And again, those costs, including taxes, insurance, maintenance are going up on those properties, putting a lot of pressure on owners, builders, and developers. Uh, of those properties. So we're seeing contraction across the board. We're in the business cycle. Remember, you know, peaks and valleys, you need to understand the business cycles. And if you go back, you know, to the late eighties, early nineties, we had a, uh, you know, we had a peak in the real estate market and, and a decline for a number of years. Then we ramped up from uh, the late nineties to early two thousands. Uh, it was kind of uphill till the mid two thousands had a little correction. Uh, then we're uphill again till 08, 09. Then we had a crash and we've been uphill ever since 2011 because of record low interest rates, quantitative easing by the Fed, and with uh, geopolitical risk around the world, potential for global conflict, World War III, not necessarily nuclear uh, Armageddon or anything like that, but but you know World War III where many countries around the world are at war with each other, the East and the West, things like that. Uh, that is a big concern is putting pressure on markets and it also uh, creates volatility in the bond market, which, which, which affects rates. But at the end of the day, the biggest issues you have, what drives the value of real estate is the availability of the debt and the cost of that debt. So you got to be able to borrow money and it's got to be an affordable rate. So that's what drives prices in real estate, commercial and residential. It's all about the payments in residential. It's all about the cash flow in commercial. What's happened in residential with the median house price going up so high, rates going up so high, it's pushed the affordability index to record low uh, levels. Um, you know, there's just lack of affordability out there and in commercial. Same thing with um, a lot of sellers still locked into those commercial low rates uh, and high prices that is still trying to adjust and reach that equilibrium between cap rates and what investors are willing to pay and what sellers can and are willing to sell for. We're seeing a lot of assets go back to the lenders. So how do you position yourself? If you're looking to buy a house, look for those rate buy downs, incentives by builders. Uh, there's some creative mortgage products out there. The administration is looking to put some programs in place with down payment assistance. Uh, you know, if you're under pressure and you lose your job, there's going to be forbearance assistance. We've never seen those things before. 
uh, mortgages, 30 year mortgages. A lot of those uh, mortgage companies are making those loans uh, assumable upon request. So there are opportunities to assume low rate mortgages on houses. We're going to see a lot more of that done. You can do a subject to where you take title to the property uh, and continue to make the payments. The mortgage stays in the seller's name. I've got videos on my website all about that. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, when it comes to commercial, I think we're going to see a lot of the stress going into 2024. Rates are going to continue to stay higher for longer uh, as the Fed continues to fight inflation. GDP came out uh, as of the filming of this video. It was over 4%, so the economy is still strong. People are still employed. Inflation is still sticky. So those that's going to keep the Fed uh, resolved to keep rates higher for longer to get inflation under control. So there's no sign of this high rate environment ending anytime soon. We don't have enough inventory anywhere for or most types of, well, definitely in housing and most types of commercial assets. There is some supply coming on the market, multifamily. Office, of course, has taken a big hit. Retail has made a little bit of a rebound, but at the end of the day, uh, there still is a, a supply problem and a demand issue that we're dealing with at the same time. So that is your weekly real estate market moves update. I'll see you next week.